Good evening all, and welcome. We are going to break convention for tonight. We have a collection of hilarious, terrifying, and horrific stories about poop. We haven't done this in a year and a half, and frankly, it's overdue. So for now, it's time to get comfortable and let the brownness take control. This is a big deal for me to talk about, because I used to be someone who was very embarrassed about bodily functions, even though I enjoyed the stories of others' bodily mishaps. The story took place when I was about 20 years old, and had been dating my boyfriend for about three years. His parents had a timeshare in the Caribbean, so he visited it about once a year, and the week was usually spent going out to eat and snorkeling. Generally, my digestive tract shuts down on vacation, especially with another family. So initially I was constipated, but one morning I woke up with terrible stomach cramps. We were supposed to go snorkeling on a remote beach that day, and I was too embarrassed to let anyone know I wasn't feeling well. I may have told them it was period related, so that they wouldn't ask any further questions. After one unsuccessful trip to the bathroom at the breakfast restaurant, we started diving out to the beach. I was clutching my stomach in pain all the way there, but I knew there would be a little building on the beach that had toilets and showers. To my horror, when I showed up, the bathrooms were down for maintenance, so I acted like everything was okay snorkeled for a bit, but kept returning to the shore to see if the toilets were up and running yet. I must have visited about three times, and each of those, the toilet was still out of order. I even considered letting loose in the ocean, but was afraid someone would catch me doing that, or I would attract some sort of predatory animal, after having dumped a big bucket of butt chum in the water. Finally, I decided enough was enough. So when I thought nobody was looking, I ducked into the woods. If you've ever been to St. John, you'll know that some of the beaches are remote, and there are a lot of woods surrounding the island, that more resembles a jungle with how thickly vegetated it is. I was in my bathing suit with no shoes, but I still fought my way through the thorns and vines, until I was confident that nobody could see me anymore. I don't know about the nearby islands, but on this particular one, mongooses run rampant all over the place. I came across a small clearing in the woods that was basically all dirt mounds and holes everywhere. Then I noticed all the mongoose running around. So this was some sort of mongoose burrow community. I remember saying something like, I'm so sorry guys, dropped my bathing suit and unleashed hell all over their little mongoose kingdom. It looked like something out of the exorcist, except exiting my backside. I could have crapped on a mongoose's head, and I wouldn't have even known. Once that was over with, I snuck back through the woods to the beach, and nobody even knew I was gone. I think I finally told my boyfriend about 10 years later, and he thought it was pretty hysterical. And now, I'm telling the entire internet. I work for the police department. This one time we had a guy in the jail start having a seizure. Now we have seizures all the time. I run in to protect his head and make sure his medical is safe. So three of us go in. The way ours is set up is directly supervision three pods to a cluster. We get in there, and this guy is already on the floor spazzing out. Our policy wants us to grab limbs and put something under the inmate's head to prevent him from hurting himself. I go in, grab his blanket, and put it under his head to try and keep him from bashing the crap out of the concrete. Medical arrives and is doing the vitals, and all that stuff, and he finally comes out of it, but starts fighting. 
we're trying to tell him that we're here to help. This skinny old ass man is almost able to get away from the three of us. The boot that had a hold of his leg calls for more deputies to step over. So naturally everybody and the mama comes running in. So now there's about 12 of us, a sergeant, another sergeant, a lieutenant, and we're all lifting this guy and his jumpsuit just slides off him and he's butt ass naked. He's still fighting us, sweaty as hell, making it hard for us to keep hold of him. So the lieutenant says to go get Rocky. Rocky is the name of our restraint chair. So mum fetches it and we sit him down. I resume control of his head and he starts spitting at the deputies, restraining his hands and feet. The spit mask goes on and I'm laying into this dude on both sides with that pressure point under the jaw. He is just staring up at me with those wide eyes, teeth clenched and making this weird ass sound. This whole time I'm telling him to calm down and stop resisting. We ended up getting him all restrained and I heard a loud yell, you sick, and everyone started laughing. And when we all have deputies rolling on the ground, I look up to see the guy that was working his feet covered in this dude's fecal matter. Funniest thing ever. Code Brown for sure. A couple of years ago, I was going to a community college in Utah. I had a few classes, one on one of the other campuses for my school. It was a weird half new building, half old building with numbers and floors that didn't make sense. I went up to the fourth floor, which I knew was there that had a restroom and one I knew was always free of people. I go into the bathroom and notice someone in black Crocs in one of the stalls. Since I really have to poop, I go into this other stall and take my time, trying to be as quiet as possible. The whole time, the stall next to me is quiet. So I guess the other woman must also be pooping. It had been a while at that point, and I get a weird feeling like maybe it's just shoes in the stall next to me. So I look under the stall and the rest of the poop in me comes out because I see a woman with curly brown hair on her hands and knees staring at me with her nostrils flared. I scream a little bit, pulled up my pants without flushing or wiping and left immediately. I was recently driving behind a rig without a trailer through the Appalachians. This guy fired a full gallon milk jug of piss out the passenger window, then another one and another one. I watched this guy throw out 12 trucker bombs, each a gallon jug full of piss out the side window. I was disgusted, but amazed that this seeming behemoth of a man could navigate the winding road while just launching full gallon jugs way out of the cab. I tried to throw a banana peel out the window the other day and it made it two feet. God bless you, King Piss Jug. A couple of months ago, while house sitting slash dog sitting for my parents, I had an eerie feeling as an obsessive ID checker, channel watcher and young female, I played it off as paranoia. During these days, whenever I took the dog out, he suddenly began sniffing areas he'd never sniffed before, particularly underneath each of our windows. And thankfully, it's because of him that I discovered two large footprints under the window that looked directly into our dining room. Around the same time, about two months ago, I noticed a man walking up and down our street that I'd never seen before. And this is a small Midwestern town. He also had odd mannerisms, prolonged eye contact, continued staring and craning his neck as he walked by and never returned my smiles, hellos or waves. Eventually I became irritated due to how creeped out I was with both him and the eerie feeling in general and decided to wave upon no acknowledgement in return, other than a cold stare. I got up and acted like I was going to follow him down the street 
to which made him walk faster and turn a sudden corner. I never saw him again. Now today, I help my parents out by picking up their dog from the groomers, as it's right up the street and safe in a suburban area. When I return home with the dog, I had an unexplained horrible feeling the minute I came through the door. Something seemed misplaced. Perhaps it was a blanket. I threw a load of laundry on the basement and quickly stood up and looked around. No one there. Then I proceeded to go to the bathroom to check my makeup. And right when I looked down to my left, there's feces in the toilet, with no toilet paper and not flushed. I've been the only one home all morning. I immediately throw back the shower curtain and start shaking. And when nothing's there, I close the bathroom door and lock myself inside. I called dispatch. They arrived in less than two minutes, searching the entire property, making me check my laptop to see if any recent search history that isn't my own, and to check the fridge to see if any food was missing, and all valuables were accounted for. I know this isn't my feces. No one in my family would have a bowel movement and not use toilet paper or flush. I know someone's been here. Yet because I love horror movies and the ID channel, they think I'm crazy. I am a truck mechanic. At my old shop, these two Russians came in with a sleeper cab tractor trailer with a shifting problem. My foreman got the truck and suspected a clutch, so they pulled it in. When someone went under, they noticed an awful smell. Turns out these guys cut a hole in the floor of the cab to take a crap in in order to decrease stops. Good in theory. However, the hole was directly above the drive shaft, U joint, therefore slinging crap everywhere underneath. I pulled into a really crappy Flying J truck stop in Houston last summer at about 2 or 3 a.m. and got the last spot in the lot. To preface, I am a trucker. Houston is a complete crap hole to begin with, with all the low lowlifes that seem to congregate at these truck stops. I got super lucky with this spot because I could drive nose into it instead of backing up into it, and it butted into a fence. The reason nose in to a fence is good is because it's darker, and you're further away from the running diesel engines of the other trucks. I should note that my truck would not just idle all night, as it had a cutoff system regulated by a thermostat in my sleeper. It turned on if it got too hot, and turned back off when the temperature went back to whatever I set it at. Houston summer nights can be bad, because it's so damn humid. I woke up not even an hour later, and I am drenched in sweat, with my thermo reading somewhere in the low 90s. Then I got into my driver's seat, my instrument cluster was throwing codes and flashing lights. Oh crap, a crucial fluid is empty, so the engine shut down to avoid damage. But I was sure I filled it the day before, the last five to six miles between fills. That was weird. And then something caught my eye. A woman. The most beautiful woman I had ever seen. Fair Aphrodite held no compare. I'm joking. She was a wrecked out, reamed out lot junkie, with track marks a mile long. She came out of the space between my tractor and trailer and walked up to my door and knocked. She gave me some preamble, like they all do, about needing money, except she said she needed exactly $7 and she was willing to work for it. I said no and to get lost, and asked what the hell she was doing there. She rambles again but lowers the amount to $2 and she's willing to work for it. Still no except I grabbed a handful of laundry quarters and threw them out one window. She skittered off into the night, chasing them under trailers, and I turned on my truck. Well, crap. Everything seems fine. It appears as the fluid levels are good in here, and no kill codes are on. I put my handgun in my pocket, grab a flashlight after making sure she's gone, 
and step out to manually check fluids and cargo. Okay, fluids are good, and my cargo is still there. What was all that about? I go between my tractor and trailer and see nothing, until the smell hits me. I look down to see corn and other bits mixed into some kind of large sludge. Crap. That's diarrhea. Turns out that the girl wasn't trying. Turns out that lot lizard left me a little something extra on her exit. This happened to me several years ago. I was with my late friend on a road trip we had from the San Francisco Bay Area to Las Vegas for the new millennium, the year 2000. We had driven to Hoover for the drive across a time zone as to experience the year change twice, thus crossing back in time a whole millennium. It was successful and we quickly drove back in order to celebrate the change an hour later. There we had three locations for fireworks, and it was spectacular. Afterwards, we had been staying at a cheap motel on the outskirts of the strip, and after a little horizontal entertainment, went to sleep. The following morning, as I had been doing a test, the 100 day trial is what the Asian custom calls it. Anyway, for New Year's Day, we had been invited to a private poolside party. We go, and I always like to do the cannonball jump, one involving curling up into the fetal position and jumping into the water to make a huge splash. At one point after being splashed back by other swimmers, I paused as my gut didn't feel good. Something was brewing. I didn't know what. The next moment to my total horror and surprise, I unexpectedly shot out this heavy torrent of brown liquid that looked like a rocket engine flame but of course was brown in colour. I had diarrhoea. This brown cloud formed around me as I scared everyone out the water. I was alone and in shock, and couldn't believe what just happened. Now unknown to me, someone in there had taken a video and unloaded it to YouTube, and it has since gone viral. It was perchance one in a trillion that I discovered this video. I don't know who the videographer was, but I did know that one person at the party risked contamination, as I had some communicable disease and mustered the courage to jump back in and help me get out of the pool. He arm in arm escorted me past the other guests, and I walked into their house and had a small subsequent accident on their carpet. As I was taken to their half bath on the ground floor, I had more stuff come out and was offered some old clothing to wear and in the interim offered to shower as well. My friend was embarrassed. The host who brought us to the party drove us back up to the strip mall to our motel. I was sick with something as my diarrhea and other intestinal symptoms lasted for three days, which delayed our departure back to San Fran. Later, as we had booked out of that motel, we headed back north. While sailing through Castia, as my friend had decided to drive non-stop, save for petrol stops back to the Bay Area, planned not to stop for any toilet breaks, which was stupid. He soon found out he had to pee himself. Meanwhile, my gut rumbled again, and I thought, oh no, not here. I had this sudden urge to defecate, and although I tried to hold it in, the human body has a built-in valve like a steam boiler, but mine was about to trip. Going through Castillac, the last community before the grapevine grade, my safety valve tripped. That meant that all my three sphincter muscles were now immediately under the control of this emergency system, and to protect from serious injury that could be life-threatening, all three muscles were involuntarily out of control and relaxed. This is like the gate on a water reservoir suddenly opening fully and dumbing the water out and my diarrhea just shat into my shorts onto the seat and began to reek. We pulled off to the trucks area and parked. I got out, dripping all my tannish fecal matter down the back of my exposed leg. 
my tannish lava was now seen by all the truckers, most of which were intolerant rednecks. I got some dirty looks, but no snide remarks or attacks, and I was dripping and leaving a trail of my crap as I was looking for their loo. I found it, and the first thing I did was wait in queue for a stall. I had to go in a queue, and some let loose on the floor. Then I got a stall and finished my business. And now another problem, I was drenched in my own feces. My shorts were soaping wet, and tan with my diarrhea as well. Right in front of the crowd, I went naked and covered with it to the basin to try and rinse my shorts out as best as possible. I accomplished that, but they were of course still wet. I used wet paper towels to wipe myself off as best I could, but this was an almost complete failure. Well, I put back on my shorts and left the loo and headed back to my friend's car. I still stank and he tried to clean up my messy seat as best he could. Then with all four windows open, we headed back north on the I-5 interstate. I only hoped my friend learned his lesson to stop when someone needs to urgently use the loo. It was a somber trip back up to San Francisco and he dropped me off where I lived in outer San Francisco and then went back to Concord in the Eastern Bay for his work. At home, I was still sick, but the following day I made a full recovery. He eventually told his sister about our little adventure and she scolded him severely as never to do that again. And my friend listened and never again caused me such embarrassment and displeasure. He unfortunately died a few years later from a heart attack. This took place just the other day, Thanksgiving to be exact. I was in Atlanta, Georgia visiting my family for the holidays. When we thought it would be a fun idea to go play a game at the local park about a mile away. All the shops near my aunt's house were closed because of the holidays. I started walking about halfway there when I felt the urge to go. I thought, crap, this isn't good. I'm nowhere near a bathroom, nor could I go on this side of the road. I did pass a park where little children were playing and didn't see a bathroom. So I was in a situation of whether or not I wanted to walk back to my aunt's house and let it slide there or walk to where I was going and hope to find a bathroom. I decided to keep going and there was a bathroom somewhere in the park since it was a large public space. I continue walking and then get all sweaty and let it slide right there on the sidewalk. There were people all around me, so I just pretended that nothing happened and that I needed to get to the bathroom ASAP. As soon as I made it, after doing the walk of shame, when I was in the park, I looked for a bathroom and saw a Coke machine and thought to myself, there must be a restroom nearby. However, I walked up to the building of the Coke machine and walked around it and saw a sign that said bathroom. Bingo. I was second in line and was on my phone when the first person went in, so I wasn't paying attention to what the hell was going on. Because when I walked in, I heard something go, hello, welcome to the smart bathroom. Please touch the button to lock the door. I touched the button that says touch to lock and the door closed like on a spaceship. I walked over to the toilet and it looked like one you'd see on an airplane. I pulled my pants off and when I went to get toilet paper, I pressed the button that said toilet paper and there was nothing coming out. At first I thought I was doing it wrong until I realized they were out. So I cleaned myself up the best I could. My underpants were not as bad as I thought they'd be. So I put them back on after soaking them in toilet water and having wet underwear. That wasn't fun, but better than having poop. Also, this bathroom is on a 10 minute timer. So if you're in there for more than 10 minutes, an alarm will sound, and it was around about the five minute mark. So I knew I was good, and it was kind of funny how I was sitting there pressing buttons, like, what does this do? I went and washed my hands and then the phone rang. It was my aunt, asking where I was, since I told them I'd meet them at the park. 
I told her I was in the robot bathroom. She came and found me, and as we were walking back, we passed the not-so-subtle turd I'd left by the wayside. I didn't say anything, and as she saw it, she just went, Ugh, tourists. I'm in nursing school, but have chronic Crohn's disorder, so that means I sometimes have to use the bathroom six times a day. Now being in nursing school can make it hard. I started doing rounds with my training, and that meant I had to work at a local hospital. One day I woke up and realized I had a flare going on with my disorder. I thought to myself, great. This only happens about once a year, but it had to happen now. I still decided to go do my rounds, so I wouldn't fail the class. I did my rounds at the hospital, so that meant I would be working with other nurses and patients. I had to sit with this girl who was there after surgery, and was bored and wanted me to sit with her, so of course I did. About an hour into me sitting with her, I got that feeling in my stomach you get right before you're about to do the biggest poop ever. I thought I couldn't leave the room because I couldn't leave the girl alone unless another nurse came in and took over for me. I pressed the red button on the remote to call for a nurse to take my place, and just my luck, it took about two minutes for them to answer the call button, which is a bit faster than usual. When the nurse arrived, I booked it out of there, and figured since it was a hospital, it would be easy to find a bathroom. Just my luck, the one on the unit was in use, so I had to go find one elsewhere. I took the elevator, and did that I'm about to crap my pants walk all the way to the bathroom. When I got to the bathroom, I closed the door, sat down, and then my body was just kind of like, oh, I don't need to go anymore. I tried so hard to force it out, but nothing would happen. When I started walking back to the elevator, there was no stopping it, and I just crapped myself, and prayed to God it wouldn't show through my scrubs. I ran back to the bathroom, where it was a big mess I did, and did my best to wipe it off my pants, but it was pointless. I went out, and figured I would go to the staff room where I could take a shower, and get some new scrubs, since we also had two on hand, just in case someone vomited on you. When I got there to the break room, there was one of my classmates. She started laughing at me, and I made some bullshit excuse about Monday, took a shower, and got into new scrubs. I then, about 20 minutes later, walked back into the ward, and the charge nurse looked at me like, where the hell were you? I told her I was having a medical issue, and told her a summary of what happened. She understood at once, and I walked back into the room, and the girl asked me where I was. I just told her all the bathrooms were full, and sorry it took so long. At the end of the day, I just washed my scrubs, and pretended like nothing had happened. I am a 22-year-old female living in Thailand. I was living outside of Bangkok, and I really needed to use the bathroom. Now in Thailand, we for the most part have squat toilets. I really had to go. So I found the nearest bathroom and went. And trust me, when I say I went. I was bloated and was in pain. And I was thinking to myself, this is going to be fun. Especially if someone else walks in. And I knew they were going to smell it and judge me. I waited for the person in the next stall to leave. And I swear it felt like forever for them to go. But once they did, I was able to leave. I got out, all triumphant with myself. And not five minutes later, I felt an urge to let it out right there and then. I thought this couldn't be happening. I took about 10 steps to the nearest bathroom, and didn't make it. I exploded all over the floor, and people started looking at me, and I felt so embarrassed. I called my friend, and she laughed at me and said to meet her up near the SkyTrain entrance. I met up with her, and by that time, all of this debris was seeping through my pants. So I had a big poop stain on my butt. My friend just started laughing at me. But long story short, she took me home, and I managed to get changed. But I've never been so embarrassed in my life. 
I have a medical condition called ulceractive colitis, where it can make you tired and have to use the bathroom more than normal people do. So anyway, I was supposed to sing at the concert in my town to hopefully raise some money for charity. It was pouring with rain, and I was waiting for the go-ahead to sing since I couldn't sing in the thunder, because I assume people in my town are scared of that. An hour goes by, and I sing my three songs. I really had to use the bathroom during my set, and I didn't tell my bodyguard that I needed to use the bathroom. After singing, I watched the videos of my songs, and you could see my face. I was fighting back the urge to crap myself on stage. Move forward to the next day when the real festival started. My job was to walk around and interview the vendors. It was a good job because it meant having a bodyguard and walking around with the TV camera crew. This is where shit happens legit. I was interviewing people when the urge overcame me. That's when it just happened. And I went in my pants. My face said it all. The C3 cop I was interviewing looked at me and asked if I was okay. Then I proceeded to vomit and crap at the same time. I fell to the ground. My body couldn't handle it. One of the cops said I needed to get the emergency services out there. And by the time, about a hundred people were standing around me, and I felt sick and embarrassed. The EMS showed up, and what made it worse is as I was crapping and puking, all the paramedics, as there were about five, looked at me. They walked up to me and said, we're gonna pick you up and carry you to our ambulance. By this time, people were taking photos, and the EMS team were getting me on a stretcher. I was covered in crap and puke, and I wanted nothing more than to go home. The paramedics got me into their ambulance and processed me into their system, and asked me what was wrong, and did we need to go to the ER. I shook my head. I didn't want to be seen like this. My CNA was nowhere to be found. She'd walked off somewhere to look at stuff, and I'm 17, so I didn't have much say if I was going into the ER or not. The cops managed to track down my CNA who came quickly, and the emergency services team said that I didn't need to go to the hospital and I'd be fine. They decided I should just go home and have a shower and rest. I went home, running all the way, covered in my own filth, feeling incredibly embarrassed, but arrived home, showered, and put on some clean clothes. I'm gonna have surgery on Monday, to figure out why my ulceractive colitis is flaring up so much. I was working at a furniture rental store making deliveries, and we had to deliver this large, heavy, sectional living room set. At the time, my diet consisted of greasier foods than most, and I'm about half the man I used to be. And had been stopped up for four days for some reason. We get to the customer's home and start the delivery. We wrestle the couch up the stairs and into the living room and set it up. The customer then decided she wanted the couch to face the other way, so we unhook the parts of the couch and bend down to pick it up and turn it round. At that moment, it all comes out with the biggest, wettest sounding fart you've ever heard. A surge of brown grease goo slides out of me and into my pants, and all I can do is run out the door. The look on the customer's face was of the purest horror I had ever seen. I'm 17 years old, working at a video store, and I had to go. So I do. I wipe twice, everything looks clean, I stand up and pull up my trousers. I turn on my heel to wash my hands in the sink, and then I feel a cold lump in my underpants. I wiggle. Gross. What did I drop in my pants? I look down, and there's crap streaked all over my undies. I'm in shock, wipe my butthole squeaky clean, and look again. No poop, just the streaks. I scratch my head. I get up, pull my pants, and feel it again, a cold knob. 
It moves when I move. I drop the pot again and look again. More streaks. What the hell is going on? I start to scream. There's little poo dangling from a hair out my butt. Turns out that every time I dropped into the pot, this thing would float to the surface of the water and drift under the toilet seat. Every time I stood, it would swing back into place. I couldn't believe it. I had to pull the little hair out my ass like a clown pulls a handkerchief out of its sleeve. And it just kept coming. I am at a party in my sophomore year of college. The girls are all talking about hitting the club, so I ask to use the toilet before we go. My friend tosses me the keys, and I head down the hall to do my business. The automatic lights click on. The stall is in the far corner, and I hit it. So far, so good. She crowns, she gains some weight, and then, oh my god, oh my god, ow. High protein diet? Why does this hurt so much? It feels like a giant. She's coming out. What am I giving birth to? This is the kind of poo that makes you bleed from the sphincter. That's how big and hard it is. Anyway, halfway out she gets stuck. I keep pushing. Nothing. It's autumn on the east coast, and the weather is humid. I break a serious sweat. My party hair starts to get damp and curl. I start pitting out my shirt, and my chest is sweating. I'm starting to soak through the front of the shirt, and I can't go out as the sweaty girl. I take my shirt off. This poo is stuck, and it hurts so bad. The automatic light clicks off. I'm in the dark. I'm waving my hands, but the stall is too far in the corner and the light doesn't detect me. I open the stall door and start flailing my shirt. No detection. I'm in the dark. I try to stand up off the toilet, but the pressure on my sphincter is too intense. I start crying. It's been 15 minutes. My friends have been waiting for 15 minutes. I start screaming for help. No one can hear me over the music. 20 minutes in, I go in for the big dig. I cover my fingers with toilet paper, but the paper sort of breaks and I'm getting poop on my fingers. I continue to excavate in the dark, topless. And at last, I free up enough muck and the Titanic slides into the sea. The band was playing a gig in a crappy drive bar just outside of Kansas City. I had been surviving on a diet of gas station sandwiches, McDonald's and PBR for about two weeks. We load in, do the sound check, and everything was ready to go when I get the urge. I check the bar's bathroom, and true to form, there's just one urinal, a toilet, and a door that doesn't lock. The drummer and I are usually willing to stand guard for each other in situations like this, but he had just sat down to eat the free food from the bar, and after a week or two of eating crappy food, I couldn't interrupt. Across the parking lot was a McDonald's, so I made a break for it. On the walk across the tarmac, I have a grumbly tummy going full bore. I have to be on stage in 20 minutes, I simply don't have time to crap myself. I cut past the playground and into the back where the bathrooms are, through the door into the stall, only to find a toilet that looks like it's already clogged, murky brown water. And even though it's only six inches deep, you can't see the bottom. I don't have a choice. I drop the pants and was almost done by the time the butt hits the porcelain. I'm sitting grunting and groaning and the stall door rattles. Be right out. I say in the voice of someone obviously crapping so hard, my toenails are getting shorter. I do the triple wipe, and out of habit hit the flush handle. Crap. Here comes the shitterfall. Everything I just left, and everything that was already there when I got there comes flowing over the top. It makes the wet floppy sound of fresh turds falling overboard. I get the pants back on, and open the door. Avoiding eye contact, I let the waiting guy know the toilet is clogged. I know, he says. 
and I look up to the saddest McDonald's employee I have ever seen. I look to his face and then the plunger in his hand and said, I'm so sorry and walked out. When I was changing my infant son, he decided to take a poo while I was changing him. We were and still are cash strapped. So instead of letting him poo in the fresh diaper, I stuck out my hand and caught that little turd. I did not regret it. I was driving my wife's car home from New Orleans once and sharted while going down I-10. I had painful gas for the past 30 to 40 miles, just strained a little too hard and a bit came out. What to do? I wasn't sure how bad it was. I didn't want to check because of the potential of smearing crap on the seat and the steering wheel. I knew I could not drive the remaining hour and a half in crap. I had to stop. I was torn as to which sort of gas station to stop at. A nasty one that would be disgusting or a nice one that I may stink up. I opted for one that was somewhere in between. The assessment. I waddled into a one stall, one urinal restroom, entered the stall, unzipped my pants and underwear and sat to survey the damage. Not as bad as it could have been, underwear was messed up, but minimal soiling of jeans. I was about to unshoe and discard the problem when someone came in and seemed to be waiting for the stall. Stealth disposal slash poor gas station attendant. I didn't want to be evident of what I was doing out of shame. So I took up my pocket knife and quietly cut off my own underwear. I masked the cutting noise by pseudo grunts as I faked a crap. No way in hell was I pocketing them or carrying them around in my hand. I didn't know where to dispose of them. So opted to sandwiching them between the tank and the wall being the most responsible choice. I wiped, flushed, pulled up my pants, walked out and gave the future inhabitant a waiting nod. As I passed him on my way to the sink, I walked out the restroom commando style, feeling that I'd done the best I could with a literal crappy situation. But at the same time, mad in a guilt over sick and slippery presence that I'd left for other patrons to smell and for an attendant to clean up. I'm a pilot on a small commuter plane, and it's too small to have a bathroom. But the flights are usually one to two hours. So not usually a big issue if you go before you take off. Well, one time I had explosive diarrhea come on quite suddenly in the middle of a flight. And you know what? That comes out whether you authorize it or not. I basically had no choice. I went as far back onto the plane as I could and in the middle of the aisle with passengers on either side looking at me, I take a huge liquid fire crap into a pizza box. One time, somebody had the splatter type of diarrhea at work and it got all over the painted cinder block walls. I don't know how they managed, but there you have it. It was hours until the janitors would arrive and we had to use the damn stall. So I took it upon myself to clean up. I grabbed a spray bottle from the cleaning supplies and a bunch of rags and went at it. Turns out I took out a bottle of furniture polish and only managed to smear poop all over the walls and then polish it into a high gloss shine. Way back in high school, I had the stomach flu but still went to my girlfriend's house for dinner and movies on VHS. At some point, I felt like I had to go. So I went to the washroom and hunkered down, but it was slow. And suddenly my stomach turned and I felt like I was going to hurl. So I just got up off the toilet and turned to puke. Unfortunately, the tightening of my stomach muscles caused me to spray crap up the wall behind me, as well as all over the nice fluffy towels on the rack. Delicious. This happened to me in New York City. 
It was not long ago, I was in my mid-twenties, and I came up from Sydney, Australia for a holiday to the Big Apple. It was their annual LGBTQ week, and this weekend wound up with their pride parade. Nothing like the one we have in Sydney, as the LGBTQIA Mardi Gras festival. Yes, I am also a member of the LGBTQ community. I had my friend to whom I had met while in New York City who lived in Jersey nearby. He had a car, and we had this one night, the pink evening, or the day before the final parade, and we went out to dinner. It was a quaint Mexican restaurant, one with the theme of the ancient Toltec Empire. I had a huge quesadilla dish, and a chocolate. It was delicious. Stephen had two burritos and some beers. At one point, I had to go to the toilet. I went to the loo and did my number, and came back and resumed my meal. No worries. After we left and got into his car and drove about Manhattan a bit, getting used to driving on the right in America, we wound up parking by the Hudson River. Many old dilapidated wooden pier buildings had been raised, and some new reinforced concrete foot piers had replaced them. Thus, we walked out onto one of them. It was, of course, June, the LGBTQ month in America. This meant hot, sweltering, muggy days from the Mid-Atlantic. So of course, we were both wearing appropriate warm weather clothes. Steve had some beige smugglers on, and I had a page of Hawaiian boardies. We both had tees and athletic shoes. Without any prior notice, I suddenly had the onset of pain in my gut. I quaked and shook. It was painful. It was stomach cramps, and then about 30 seconds later, literally all hell broke loose. This sequence of events happened very fast. I had this sudden strong urge to defecate, and I couldn't hold on. Then it happened. The torrent of foul, yellowish tan lava shot out into my nice Hawaiian bodies. No, it was not Mauna Kea erupting. But too right felt like it. As they spilled down my exposed legs, and a huge lava flow developed my feet. This newly formed yellowish tan mushy lake formed all over the pier for all New Yorkers and tourists alike to see. I couldn't hold it back. My sphincter was a cactus. This flow just wanted to do its thing. Now I know how volcanoes feel. I was absolutely stunned. I was conged. The embarrassment was wild. I really thought this was it. I was not going to make it to the parade the following Sunday. I thought I was literally going to cark it. I was already cactus, or at least crook. Then to make it even worse, Stephen suddenly whipped out of his pocket, in his cosy, a small glass vial. He was suddenly laughing. I thought, what the hell, why was he laughing? When I thought I needed to go to the nearest A&E or emergency department. He began to admit that what he had done earlier, back at the Toltec restaurant, was that while I was in the toilet, he had dumped five vials of bowel evacuate into my hot chocolate. As you can imagine, bowel evacuate is a very strong purgative. What the hell, I thought. That's unbelievable. I was fuming that I almost literally caught fire. I yelled back at him and gave him the flick. Friendship over. I could have died. This was his prank that backfired? It just as quick as a lizard drinking water had taken effect and I had literally dumped the contents of my intestinal tract onto that pier over the Hudson River. My nice pair of bordies was now a cactus, as I had no hope for them to even be washable. The stench was enough to put one's beak on permanent strike. The embarrassment was, well, I can't even find strine or even regular Aussie received English to find the appropriate adjective to describe it. I was now standing alone in the middle of this relatively new concrete pier in Manhattan in the States, surrounded by my own yellowish tan human mud. I had to do something, and not just stand there in my own filth. 
I was too embarrassed to ask anyone where the nearest medical center would be, but had to. So I mustered the courage to break the ice with a spectator and asked him where the nearest medical facility would be. He suggested to me the Mount Sinai Beth Israel Hospital at 1st Avenue and 16th Street and was given directions of how to get there. I left my little pedestal of diarrhea and started to head in the direction of the hospital. I found the emergency department and went in queue. It was not a long queue, save about five to 10 people at most. I had to get the woman behind me to save me a spot as I had to use the loo to try and clean myself up a bit. I came back and finally it was my turn and I got seen by a triage nurse. I told her the full embarrassment and she comforted me as no drama as this situation I have been in is fortunately not serious. Just embarrassing as hell, but not life threatening. I was given a free emergency prescription of an OTC, anti-diarrhea, Imodium, and a general anesthetic for my sore anus. I was released in no time and had instantly broken off with Stephen, which of course meant I had nowhere to stay. So I made query as to a local hotel that was not so expensive. I wound up after contacting a local LGBTQ info center in Manhattan and ended up staying in a hotel uptown near the Bronx. I still had a bad case of diarrhea for the next few days. I thought I would have to miss out on the pride parade the following day, but amazingly I did manage to attend. Never saw Steven again. What a tool. I work for the police department. We had this one guy come in all the time. We just got him sent to state hospital, but he would be back. He always comes back. This dude is MHMR. He would write deputies names on the wall and shit and say that's his kill list. I've made that list several times. It's really impressive because I have a long list of names and he has enough crap to spell it across the cell wall. Once he even drew a penis along the length. I think he was complimenting me that day. Sometimes when he isn't in such a crappy mood, he will try to wire a couple of million to his bank account in New Zealand. I told him it was done once and he told me he was going to give me an F 18 and 2 million. I'm still waiting on that. And this fool called the White House once and threatened the president's life over the jail phone and the secret service showed up an hour later. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. So I guess we made it to the end of poop stories. We got there in the end, being at the bottom of the polls or not. I had to do this again. You know, all of this started about two and a half to three years ago now, with a regular on the channel back then. He asked if I would do hemorrhoid stories. I said there'd be no way, but if his comment got over 100 likes, I'd do it. You know what? That comment smashed the target. And me being a man of my word, went ahead and found 10 hemorrhoid stories. The resulting video was so hilarious that people demanded a sequel, which after a few months I gave. And since then, we've been brown free on the channel. But in the spirit of Mr. Pincer and friends, I thought it'd be funny to have the third try. I really hope that you did enjoy. I've been collecting these stories for a long time, and I was just waiting for the right moment to drop it so to speak. So yeah, if you liked it, don't forget to do all the normal stuff, the comments, the likes and everything. If there's a story that you would like to share, feel free to send it to my email or Reddit. However, if it is regarding poop, it might not be on the channel for a while, to say the least. As always, a huge thanks to my incredible patrons for their support and regular donations. A dollar a month, gets your name on the credits at the end of every video. And a little bit more gets you a whole heap of other cool rewards. Let me know what you think. 
In any case, it's time for me to sign off. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.